Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the official European League of Football podcast. I'm your host, Nick Alfieri, a.k.a. Nalf, and it is championship game week. And we have on the podcast this week none other than the starting quarterback for the Stuttgart Surge, who are playing against the Rhine Fire this weekend, Riley Hennessy. We talked about the Surge's success this season and building a team from scratch and moving through the season. Riley having to combat injuries, some of his mentality and approach to playing quarterback, and of course, the ELF playoffs and now championship game. It's an exciting time for the European League of Football. Can't wait for this weekend to see Riley and the Surge and the Fire play. Without further ado, my good friend, Riley Hennessy. The one and only Riley Hennessy on the ELF podcast for the championship game week. What's up, Rye guy? Thanks for coming on the show. Hey, Nick guy. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You're welcome, man. You're very welcome. I appreciate it. So, Rye guy, I have got some questions for you. And the first one is, I think a lot of people expected the surge to be better this year than they were in previous years. I don't think a lot of people expected the surge to be in the championship game this weekend. Can you tell me how did you guys end up in this position? How did you end up um, going into the championship game in the final week of the season? Goodness. Well, it started obviously a long time before the final week, uh, all the way back in, for me, November when, uh, yeah, got the opportunity to come and play in, in Stuttgart for coach Jordan Newman. And, uh, yeah. And then kind of the dominoes just kept falling after that, as far as just player after player, obviously, um, there's what 16 of us from the unicorns, um, which is a good number, but obviously it's not the entire team. Like everybody makes it think. Yeah, um, it's so great. Yeah, I know, but it, it's a good enough number to like, hey, you got familiar faces around you. Um, yes, good feeling. Um, and then yeah, gosh, there's what I think 16 guys from that played for the surge last year, and then like 38 or something new faces. Yep. Uh, and yeah, but within within all those categories, I mean, there, there's <laughs> there's damn good football players. Um, and so obviously that's kind of the the nuts and bolts answer to, to how we got here. But I mean, it, it just, it started with coach putting, putting the team together and then, and then us just working through OTAs every other weekend, starting in gosh, what was that? March that they started working together. And then once us imports got here, uh, able to get things rolling ourselves. Um, and I think just from the very beginning, we felt like, okay, this is, this is special. This is like kind of has all, all the pieces. It's got, like I said, the familiarity of, of some faces, but then it's also got some, some new additions that, that, um, that are very meaningful. Um, and I would honestly say the biggest thing, I, I, this is the last time I'll compare anything to the unicorns, but, um, was just youth. It felt like there was, this team has a lot of 20 to 23, 24 year olds that are, good football players and, and that are contributing. And, and that's, it felt like the unicorns is every, uh, a bunch of us strapping it up. It's like, here we go. Let's <laughs> one this. more year, man. <laughs> Let's get this hold together for the couple, next couple of games. Um, and that's been the fun part, you know, of, of, you know, truly, truly going into that kind of like, you know, upperclassmen, I guess, mm -hmm. role. Yeah. It's truly youth there and, and being able to watch those guys grow and to bring it back to the question, I think that that, that whole culmination of, of all those factors has, has led to a season where we just continue to learn, continue to grow, continue to improve um, through, through wins and through losses. Um, and I think, yeah, it'd be great to win every game, but th there's just such meaningful <clears throat> lessons learned in those two losses that we, that we had that, uh, you know, everything everything matters and everything is a piece is a piece of the success thus yeah. far no i mean it makes a lot of sense I'm, i i like i like what you said there about like okay yeah there's a there's a good handful of people from the unicorns there's 16 guys um but i hate when people try to say oh jordan newman just took his whole team and it started is that because that just 
one, it's just factually incorrect. And two, it just is a, a lazy way of trying to diminish what the surge have built and done this year, what you guys have done. So uh, I, I really don't like when people say that because it's just very lazy thinking. And it's important to realize all the pieces that were put together that you guys have stacked every week, every week, every week. <clears throat> Um, and yeah, I mean, I remember being there like in March or April when you guys were starting this before you could play. Um, but just the feeling of the, it was the excitement and the, in the energy. It's like, it was a good combination of older guys and then a lot of fresh, new, fresh, new young guys as well. Um, okay. Pivoting a little bit to you personally, you have lost, I believe in your European career only one game that you have started is that correct mm -hmm. right it would be the munich game this year right yeah. because you went for those who don't know you went undefeated in italy won the championship there went undefeated in germany won the championship there and now are in the championship game in the elf with only one loss that you that you played and they'll surge lost two games this year but one of them you were out do you have any analysis of this success that you've had in Europe? Because, you know, one one might say, Riley, that you are a winner. One might say, not me, but one might say that you are a winner. Do you have an analysis of this success that you've been able to have in Europe these past three years? Yeah, one might say I'm a winner. One a criticism I've heard is, uh, you know, I just play on good teams. And who's, who's that? Your dad? Was that Pat? That was not Pat. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> thankfully, no, just some, just some lovely critics, which yeah. there's some truth in that. I, I have played for incredibly great and successful organizations, um, and have played with, with very good players around me. Um, and yeah, if, if you watch, if you watch my game, they're, they're, I don't, I don't think there's anything overly sexy about it. Um, I'm, I'm not doing crazy stuff. I just, mm -hmm. I take a lot of pride in just operating of just doing my job. I, I constantly say like my job is to get the ball to the athletes. Like let just the faster I can get them the ball, they can do the crazy stuff. Um, and so, yeah, w whether we're, I don't like the term game manager, but, but certainly, certainly someone that wants to, you know, keep everything moving forward. That's just kind of my job, whether that's three yards of play. Great. I'll take it. Cause, cause eventually that leads to success. Um, when, when those shots are there, take it. Um, but yeah, I, I just love the game of football, uh, kind of inside and out, obviously love playing it, but at a young age, fell in love with the X's and O's and, and constantly, uh, um, constantly in conversation with coach Newman back in Parma was one of the, my favorite times. I got to basically kind of co OC with, uh, my buddy Sandro and, uh, coach Mattioli did the defense. Me and Sandro did the offense. Um, and yeah, it, it was, it was so much fun. Um, and so, yeah, just, just constantly being a student of the game and constantly learning and trying to adapt and trying to figure out every single week, like, okay, what are the strengths of this defense? What's, what's the weaknesses? What do we do? Well, what do we not do? Well, how, how do we kind of mesh those two, uh, two things together to make sure that we're putting ourselves in the best position to be successful, um, and have found, have found a great, um, relationship with, with coach Newman and, and our, I would say our, our philosophies kind of, um, match up, but also differ enough that that idea is bouncing off each other are, are still new and still something that the other one wouldn't have thought of necessarily, or isn't, isn't their instinct to, to do, do one thing, which that's definitely a piece of my game that I've, that I've improved on, uh, playing under him. And, uh, yeah, I, I just love, being around it and, and hearing it. Um, and I just think all those, all those are what I attribute my success to is just, you know, I pride myself in, in just putting myself in the best position to, to be successful um, starting, starting Monday uh, of a game week. And so, yeah. Yeah. Other than that, just get good teammates and uh, run scared. <laughs> Run scared. <laughs> that has been one of your secrets. That has been one of your secrets. Actually, but just off what you said there, I, it's it's been cool to see because I've seen it a couple times with you and Coach Newman. Like 
going back and forth on things. Like you'll say, you'll you'll bring up an idea and then he'll bounce it back and you guys will go bounce and forth and figure something out. I've seen that just from the outside a couple times. It's really cool to see. Um, <clears throat> and what you said about like when you came back from your injury and I was interviewing you before the game and, you know, you know, really pushing you, trying to get a good sound bite, really trying to, you know, just get a good sound bite. Yeah. Um, but you were just very calm and you're like, I mean, it's not my job to win the game. It's just my job to get the ball to the people. Uh, it's my job to, um, you know, not, you, not, not uh, overly blow out of proportion your responsibilities. And I think that's which one of the things that you do a very good job of as well as running scared which brings you a lot of success <laughs> like that. Really good. Um, you missed games this year. You had an injury yep. and then you came back. Can you talk to me a little bit about the mental aspect of that, especially as the quarterback, especially as the clear, one of the clear leaders of the team, um, both on the field and then emotionally as well. How was this situation um, that you had to deal with of, of having to kind of take a step back and, and let other people run the team for a while? Yeah, it sucked. Like, nice. Okay, next question. <laughs> no, I, I mean it's it's difficult. It's it's and it's it's kind of an individual challenge. You go from being on a team and everything so focused on like how do we win, what do what do we need to do to all of a sudden like the team still has to maintain that, but then you don't get to be a part of that in the same uh position basically. Yeah. And I mean, I, I I cannot appreciate enough both Jan and um, Ken for just the the mindset they came in with, and and I mean, th there was no animosity, there was no like even competition type aspects. So it was just like they came in, and it was all just how again do we find ways to win? Um, and yeah, I still still have great relationships with both of them. Um, I, I did joke at the time that it. it it is kind of like watching someone else kiss your girlfriend every weekend. <laughs> um, but Darn again, it. That, that's, that's the, you know, that's being a little bit selfish and, and, and not remembering what you signed up for and, and whether you are uh, the starter or, or not, you, you signed up to be a part of a team. You signed up to be a part of a, a, a greater whole to, you know, push a standard and, and, and thus trying to achieve goals that, that the whole team set. Um, so it was difficult, but I felt, like I said, both, both Jan and Ken did a great job. Coach Newman did a great job of just keeping, keeping confidence in myself, um, and, and amongst the team and, and maintaining a, a commitment to, to me essentially. And, and, and that, that, that went a really long way. Cause that, that's a, that's a tough position to be in, especially with an injury. You're never like, oh my gosh, am I going to. How fast am I going to be okay? Am I ever going to be the the, the same? Now it's just a broken thumb, so it wasn't like I'm will I ever walk again. But uh, <laughs> but never walk again. You just don't know like what what's the grip on the ball going to be like and and stuff like that. So all those questions bouncing through your mind, and then uh, you know watching watching the team continue to be successful it is a positive, but also it sometimes can be hard yeah. mm -hmm. to um, you know to deal with that because because the show goes on the, the the ship keeps sailing and and you know you've got to swim as fast as you can to just try and keep up with it therefore once you're once you're better it's it's you know you're not behind anymore you're still just right right there i, I like that the ship keeps yeah. sailing you got to swim fast as you can to keep up with it yeah that's like one of the weird parts about football is like <clears throat> when when you are injured and you see still you still see the team like of course you want the best for the team but there's a little part like when you see the team be successful or win games without you i remember feeling that like when i was hurt and be like oh, don't you guys need me darn it you know like part there's that little part of you in there uh, and i think everybody has that i had a couple conversations with with jordan with coach newman about that it's just with football it just keeps going it keeps going with or with you out without you but i think it's a uh a really like not to be overlooked as well for the surge kind of that adversity that the team went through with having their starting quarterback be injured in the middle of the season and then having to work with two other quarterbacks at different times and then still maintaining, you know, the growth and the success and then kind of bringing it all together. Once you come back to that's uh 
that's another part of the surge storyline. I think gets overlooked that the team had to play with three different starting quarterbacks during the season as well. Um, this past weekend had a big win in Vienna, in Vienna, in Vienna, which is in Austria. Good day, mate. And, um, this is a comedy podcast. Don't forget. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're all week. Actually. <laughs> You're all week. Yeah. So I, buy, buy my tickets. Can you talk to me a little bit about the win in Vienna? What's your analysis of the game? Uh, I just kind of give me your perspective of that game and the win. Yeah. I mean, we went into Vienna knowing that we're going to go against a very talented, very sound team. Um, a team that, that, has a lot of confidence and, and, and knows what they need to do and, and is able to do it. Um, yeah, I think, I think one of our biggest strengths is, uh, is that we're kind of underestimated and that nobody kind of understands, not understands, but no one knows what to expect. And I think our physicality, um, kind of shocks some people. And, and I think this was one of those games that, you know, we came out score early, um, and really marched up and down the field outside of like three turnovers, two two terrible decisions by myself, and uh, um, yeah, it, it was just one of those games where where certainly offensively you just felt like okay they can't stop us. Like if we just hold onto the football, we'll eventually end up in the end zone. Um, and then watching the defense, you're like okay they're going up against a very talented offense, and so. If they can just get one or two stops, we have to be able to capitalize and have to be able to put ourselves in a position to have more points than the other team, <laughs> um, which, which I felt like we did. And, and defense had very timely stops. Offense, you know, again, shot ourselves in the foot, but then we're also clutch when we needed to be. Um, and yeah, on top of that, just an amazing venue, beautiful city, like beautiful weather. It was just like, it was just perfect. It, it was everything about it was was awesome. That was like such a good representation of the European League of Football and the potential of football in Europe. Like, yes. two of the best teams, amazing atmosphere, great weather, phenomenal shootout game. Like, very exciting for the fans. Yeah. Um, real like super exciting. Um, and then Search came out on top. I I, I wanted to ask you, like. I think you do a really good job at when a mistake is made, when a pick is thrown, or when something goes wrong, maintaining a um, kind of a, a forward-looking or positive or neutral outlook. Like, I feel like you never get you you never dip when a mistake is made. Like, there's uh, one of the picks on the game on on uh, on on Sunday. Was it Sunday? No, it was a Saturday. Saturday. A lot of days ago, man. But you just came off the field and you're just like, yep, yeah, okay, yeah, got it. Yeah, all right, move forward. What what can you talk to me a little about your mentality when when coming back from a mistake? Because I think you yeah. Can this. yeah, I feel like it comes from just experience. Like I have been fortunate enough, maybe unfortunate, um, to kind of have hit the lowest of the lows. I mean, in high school, again, just played on a really good team, and we're top 20 nationally and uh up 13 points in the state championship game with like a minute and five seconds left and we lost Ooh, yeah. and it was just like you know you go through a feeling like that go to college and we're ranked in the top five and division two and up 21 points at halftime and we lose in double overtime and that team goes on to blow everybody out for the national championship and you're just like man like going through those type of painful situations just kind of adds perspective to just like you've gone through the worst, right? You, you, you've gone, you've gone through that. So having the ability to kind of like, you know, using the the mantra kind of what's important now is like, well, you can't change what happened. And so all, all you can do is just, all right, I made that decision, live with it, figure out how to prevent that decision from happening again. Right. Um, and just moving forward and, and it just, yeah, I, I try my hardest to just laugh, to just laugh. Like you idiot, Riley, like, <laughs> how could you, you're so like, I can put myself in that game. Like you're so much better than that. Like 
<laughs> they do that. You, you don't idiot. Do it. Yes. Yeah, that's how it felt. Um, but again, it's like football to me has become just so fun. Like, yeah. All this, there's all the pressure. High school is all the pressure. Now it's just like, I don't feel pressure. It's just fun. It's just like, what's anybody going to say? Like, uh, there's nothing. I, I play football for my teammates, for my family, and for me. Like, that, that's it. And so, I, 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 yeah, most importantly, I, I, I'm only responsible for one person, and that's myself, first and foremost. And so, as long as I can, you know, laugh at, laugh at myself, then then I feel like I'm in a pretty good headspace and, and can let things kind of roll off my back. That's great. I am also laughing out you. Very wise words. <laughs> Very wise words from Riley. And I see these are the type of words you want from your quarterback, I would say. Um, last question before I let you go. It is a, it is a busy week for you. <clears throat> Ryan Fire this weekend. You are in the championship game. Going to be 30,000 people. What is your uh, what are your thoughts about the Ryan Fire so far in your preparation uh, of the team and your your analysis of of this weekend? Gotcha. Well, I can only speak for their defense. I haven't watched a single snap of their offense. Um, That's okay. Talented, talented defense, sound defense. The you know they they do the things that they want to do and they do them well. And so it's uh, it's gonna be a great challenge. And, and, you know, we're working hard this week to, to you know, find find weaknesses and, and, you know, try and put ourselves in positions to exploit them. And so, um, yeah, we're going to, you know, do a little bit of running the ball. We're going to do a little bit of passing the ball. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Keep those no, secrets. A ton of respect, a ton of respect for the way these guys play and, and the athletes they have and yeah. – um, Man, I'm excited. I mean, they, they've been the pinnacle of European football this entire season. And so just like last weekend, I'm excited to just walk out on the field and, you know, kind of figure out like, all right, what what, what do we got? What what, what, what can we do? And, and that's – I try and stay as much intrinsic as, as possible or as intrinsic as possible um, and, and just focus on, on you know, the defense's structure and just how, how our offensive structure can can work to benefit from that. Beautiful. Very, very mathematical of you for Riley Hennessy, the math major in college. Very well, smart thanks. analytical guy. What's that? Carry the, Carry the one, man. That's all you got. Carry the one. Listen, man, I'm done with math. Don't don't even talk to me about that. None of that. Right, guy. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming on the ELF podcast in this busy week. And uh, very – very a lot of props to everything you've accomplished this year and i am looking forward to this weekend and maybe i'll see you uh, tomorrow or so if i come to practice hey nick guy thanks for <laughs> thanks for having me and uh, i look forward to this weekend all right man see you later cheers <laughs>